to my channel. In today's video, I want to share how I care for Phalaenopsis orchids. This is going to be a quick 10 minute video, so by the end of this, you're going to know how to care for Phalaenopsis orchids, how to get them to respike, and in general, how to make sure they don't die. <laughs> If you guys are new here, my name is Nicole. I grow orchids here in New York City. I have a collection of over 200 orchids. And I started out with this Phalaenopsis orchid almost 10 years ago. So when you buy Phalaenopsis orchids, generally you buy them for the flowers. Um, it had two beautiful spikes with white and pink flowers. And um, when most people get orchids, you think that when the flowers fall off, they die. They're not dead. Um, so. I learned a lot with this one, so I'm gonna show you what I've learned in the 10 years that I've had it and uh, what to do and what not to do. So let's jump right in. Okay, so I got this orchid at a Home Depot and um, it was just so beautiful and I brought it to my brand new apartment at the time. I remember I just moved um, and I didn't know what to do. So I saw that it, was, it came in bark. Um, this one has bark and moss, but it came in bark and I was thinking, oh no, when I water it, the water is not staying in there, so I need to add more water. <laughs> so I waterlogged the poor orchid, I killed all of the roots, and I, I learned that you're not supposed to overwater orchids. So let me share what these orchids are all about. So this is a sympodial orchid, so it has one growth structure. So it, there's a stem here and it grows new leaves from the stem. When you water, you wanna make sure you don't get water in the crown. Generally, you buy these when they're in spike. When the flowers fall off, the orchid is still alive. It's really the uh, leaves that keep it going and you wanna give them bright indirect light. We'll talk about that in a bit, but um, these typically tend to spike in the fall or the winter when the temperatures go down. So once the blooms are done, you could cut off the spike, you can repot your orchid, which we'll get into, but this will certainly come back. When the flowers fade, you wanna, you can cut off the spike. Some people cut them off on a node where it can rebranch, but I like to cut it off at the base. So you wanna cut it off near the bottom and um, Basically, I like to repot these orchids. So orchids need a lot of moisture, but they need a lot of air. So these typically come in bark or sphagnum moss or something like that. And when you're watering it, what you want to do is you want to water it abundantly over a sink. Just put water, drench it, let it drain, and then put it back in its decorative pot. That's generally the best way to go about it. And then when your orchid is dry you could tell by the roots the roots will tend to be a little silvery like this one is almost ready for water you could see silvery roots on top and they're a little bit wetter on the bottom in like a day or two this will be ready for um for more water when repotting these orchids you want to get them out of their pot and get out the old media and then you're gonna feel their roots anything squishy you're gonna cut off and anything that's firm usually green those stay on. So you want to just cut off anything old. You could feel them. They're squishy. They're papery. They may come off easily. Use sterilized cutting tools, get them off, and then you can put them in bark or sphagnum moss. Or like me, I like a mixture of bark and sphagnum moss for my complex phalaenopsis orchids or just very fluffy uh, sphagnum moss, and that tends to work out well for me. Um, depending on what you use, if you use something more moisture retentive like moss, you won't water as much. If you use something like bark, you're going to water more often. You just have to monitor the condensation in the pot and know when more or less um, it looks bone dry in there. Well, not bone dry, but when it starts looking a little dry, then you want to water it again. I like to repot in the spring because that's when the, when the orchids are warmer, that's when they start pushing out their leaves. So they tend to, when they're done with their flowers, they like to focus on their leaf and their root growth. So that is when it's setting the orchid up to bloom later on in the year. So what you want to do once it's repotted, you want to water it as it approaches dryness. You don't want to overwater. You don't want to make sure it's soggy in there. That's why we have bark. That's why we have fluffy moss. You don't want to overwater it. You do not put these in soil. You want to make sure they're getting plenty of good light. So um, I like to grow these under grow lights and they work out pretty well. I use the orchid hobbyist lights, which are linked down below, but I know people that use the barina lights as well. There's some other lights called monio. So many options out there. 
but the biggest thing is that these are relatively low light orchids they don't get they don't need a ton of light in order to bloom but the most important part is that they're getting filtered or bright indirect light in general an east facing window is perfect for these or um grow lights they don't have to be too close nothing too far the barina lights work well the orchid hobbyist lights work well but you don't have to give them say like cattleya level light or cannabis level level lights like the mars hydro that's too much so something a little low to moderate and they do pretty well with regards to the temperatures these like um warmer conditions so you don't want to let them get below 60 degrees fahrenheit and then on the upper end of the range i'd say that you don't want to get too much above 95 degrees if they're in the 80s that's perfect but generally you want a day night temper differential which is something that most orchids and plants normally get in the wild and that's what helps them um, it triggers their blooms later on in the season and it also helps them to grow like they do naturally in nature um, so i would say a low of 65 and then a high of ultimate maximum of 95 preferably 80 degrees that's totally fine you can fertilize these um, using the instructions in your um, fertilizer. Um, I just follow the instructions. You give them full strength fertilizer in the spring and then in the winter, I like to throttle that back and just give them half strength fertilizer and that tends to work out well. And because these are orchids, they have more sensitive roots in general and you need to flush them once a month. So. Once a month, instead of feeding and fertilizing, what you do is you take your pot, you run it completely underwater, and um, then you're able to get out any accumulated salts out. I find they don't need a ton of humidity, so my indoor conditions work just fine. And in terms of getting these to rebloom, the most important part about this is once you repot them and you have them in fresh media, the roots are growing in nicely, they're going to be pushing out new leaves. So these are the structures that are going to support the spike later on. Um, you want to give a slight temperature drop. So what I did to get all of my Phalaenopsis to spike is I cracked open the window when it was like 50 degrees outside and it let some cool air into the grow space. Um, and the temperatures got to about 65 degrees, which is lower than they normally get at night. <laughs> my cat. <laughs> Once your Phalaenopsis orchids get a temperature drop, um, they tend to push out spikes at the same time. So all of my complex Phalaenopsis that were in that room have started pushing their spikes. Now this orchid is 10 years old. It doesn't have a ton of leaves. So let me tell you a bit about mature Phalaenopsis orchids. They grow leaves from the top, but they shed their bottom leaves. There is a stem that gets very long with these orchids. I've had to cut that stem up 10 years of this orchid and you get a stem that's very, very long. So if I kept the stem without cutting it and without repotting it, it would have been maybe up to here without leaves. It would have been just a big stem. So when you have a Phalaenopsis orchid for a period of over five, six, seven years, eventually you're gonna see that you're gonna get a, a leafless stem and the roots on the bottom die and you end up having to cut that. You really don't need to do that till about five years, but I just want to say these last for a long time. They, Like I said, this is 10 years old, so you may not think it's 10 years old because it doesn't have that many leaves. And I almost killed it because I put it in a grow method, which wasn't great for it, in semi-hydro. And most of the roots died off, but look at it now. I put it back in bark and moss and the root system is really taking off. But yes, over time you do get new leaves from the middle. When watering, you want to avoid watering the crown and you will get leaves that eventually die off. That's completely normal. The growth continues from the top. The bottom dies off. Over a period of years, you can cut that stem. I will make a video the next time I have to cut the stem, but I've cut the stem on this orchid twice. Um, and it's bloomed eight out of the last 10 years. Let me tell you some mistakes I've made with this. So in the beginning, I would water it too much because I thought that orchids should be treated like plants. And then I would add too much, too much water, keep repotting. And then I realized, oh no, I overwatered this. And then I went the other extreme. I was like, oh no, let me get a pot with extra drainage holes. I got one of those decorative ceramic pots with holes on it. 
put it in there with bark it was really dry and the leaves were really really wrinkly so if you see that the leaves are very wrinkled this one is pretty this is well hydrated you want to see leaves like this if you see that leaves are wrinkled, it could be that the roots died off and you gotta check them out, maybe get them out of the media and put it in something more with more aeration like the bark and sphagnum. I'm a big fan of this mix here for New York with our temperatures. For my hotter um, summer blooming phalaenopsis, I tend to use sphagnum moss exclusively since those like to be kept more moist. But these general phalaenopsis you get at your supermarket, I find that watering as they approach dryness is best and bark and sphagnum moss works for me. Helenopsis are super easy to grow. The most important part, you wanna make sure that there's good aeration in those roots. You water it as it's approaching dryness. And then when the spike or the flowers fall off, that doesn't mean that it's dead. It just means that the flowers are gone and it needs some time to, um, to basically work on its root system and its leaves. Once those are ready to go, then you're gonna be good. Eventually you'll get a spike. Give it a cool temperature drop at night and you're gonna be good. And look at this, this is a 10 year old orchid. And I hope to have this for many more years. Um, hopefully I'll have it for 10 more years. And it's the bigger the Phalaenopsis orchid, pro tip, the bigger the Phalaenopsis orchid, the more forgiving it is. The smaller the Phalaenopsis orchid, like the minis, if you don't water it as much, or if you forget, those are less forgiving. So if you're a beginner, get yourself a bigger Phalaenopsis just to give it a try, um, and these will be easier for you. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.